All right, time to do a uh, update on the reef tank. This is a 125 gallon mixed reef tank that's had some ups and downs over the past year and a half, but, uh, or is it two years now? Yeah, I think I've had it, uh, June was two years actually. So um, we're gonna go through it and just kind of show you what's been going on, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything like that. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you're looking for fish food, uh, that type of thing, try my website, aquaticsupportsystems.com. I'd appreciate you, any of your business. I want to thank everybody that subscribes to this channel. Um, we're getting close to 14,000, and I just really appreciate it. Uh, if you guys are new, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. Leave a comment below, let me know what you think, and uh, let's start the tour. All right, so like I said at the beginning, this is a 125 gallon reef tank. It's a mixed tank. I've got some SPS, LPS in here, um, several different types of fish. Um, the tank is just over two years old. In June, it was two years old. And I've had, uh, you know, quite a bit happen. Lost a lot of corals, grew up, grown a lot of corals, lost some fish. Um, about a year ago, I fought velvet, but uh, overall, Right now, I'd say it's it's doing pretty good, other than a few casualties and a few problems that I'll go ahead and talk about in this video. Um, but uh, we'll kind of do a close-up tour here. Um, the NEMS, as you can see, are doing phenomenal. And I've got a trio of clownfish, just basic uh, Ocellaris clownfish that host in there. Um, they are, you know, older adults that I picked up from my local fish store when I saw them and knowing that they were already paired up and were hosting in the fish store. I needed clowns for this tank, so I just uh, recently picked them up. So that's a fairly new addition. Um, Green Star Polyp Colony over here is doing, I'm going to close the shade. Maybe that'll help with some of the glare. Wow, that made a big difference. Um, Green Star Polyp Colony is doing great. The reason why they're retracted there is because just before filming, um, this uh, this piece had fallen off the ledge. It's not attached or glued or anything. I just had it sitting up there until I could frag it or reattach it. I'll get into that later. It was over here, fell off, blah, blah, blah. But tons of Green Star Polyp. Couple mushrooms down there. Um, some encrusting corals over here. This orangish yellowish one seems to be doing good. This green one's doing awful because it's getting stung by the NEM and there's nothing I can do about that. Um, I guess I could have moved it, but it's pretty, pretty much too late for that. I'll try to move it. Hammer coral's doing good. Torch and um, frog spawns are doing okay. Um, got some A cans over here earlier this spring. They're doing okay. Um, probably on me that I'm not uh, target feeding them enough. Um, right here is a uh, is a huge frog spawn that was over in the nano in the bio cube, and I just recently moved it over here to try to save it. Had some major problems in the bio cube, which I'll talk about in a separate video. Hopefully, some of this will be salvageable, not all of it. Some heads have died. I thought I could get it to bounce back over there, but anyway, that's a whole different story. Real nice Zoa colony on top here. A couple other smaller ones that I picked up at a frag swap. Mushroom colony here is doing real well. So, right here, these, uh, the Montes, I have some here on a ledge and some over here on a ledge. And they got to be too big, too heavy, and I'm not sure if when I was working in the tank, if I bumped them, I think that is actually what happened. And anyway, they broke off, which I think is probably better because they were taking up too much real estate. As much as I love them, I think I'm going to have less of those in the tank. I've still got this one here that I've fragged a few times and it's still growing. Super awesome. 
it's grown around this uh, leather toadstool, which I think is causing it to not grow and be as healthy. So I'm gonna do some work and um, cut back some of that around there. Um, this other green encrusting coral down there is doing real well. Um, I had forgotten I had it. And when I broke off some of this Monty, it was almost dead. It's gotten this beautiful green color back. This leather coral here is doing decent. I don't know what's going on because I'm not having any parameter issues, but uh, this trumpet coral right here is just slowly dying off and looking awful. So I don't know what to say about that. Any suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Here's a big piece of the uh, Monty that we were just talking about. This one I actually did attach to a frag ledge with magnetic backing and it's permanent home is gonna be there. It seems to be doing pretty good. I'd like to add some red to it all. I've got this piece of, the one last piece of red that I had left over here, I've got on a, on a magnetic bulk resupply, supply, a little frag rock too. But yeah, other than that, um, fish wise, I've had some ups and downs. I lost my awesome yellow tang, the one that I had uh, rescued and was doing real well. It just unexpectedly died. But I was lucky enough a few months ago to find this one here at my local fish store, New Wave Aquaria. If you're in Minnesota, check them out. Um, and it's doing good. I've got, I don't know if I had shown this before, but this goby right here, I forget which type it is one of the sand sifting type. I've got that in there now. It's been there for several months. Uh, this blue hippo tang. Uh, again, the clown trio. The scopius tang back here is getting, for months now, it's been getting nipped on by something. I'm not sure what, but it's doing okay other than some nip fins. There's a cleaner shrimp upside down. Um, and I also added a couple Anthias. Um, you can see those in the tank as well. Uh, six line wrasse is getting massive for a six line. And then uh, the Melanaris wrasse is somewhere in here too. Um, I can't seem to locate him right now. There's a six line, there's one of the Anthias. Um, the fire shrimp. Oh, and there's the yellow chromus wrasse. I think it's yellow chromus. Fire shrimp. Funny story about the yellow. Um, about a month ago, I went to change my filter socks, pull them out, put them in a bucket like I always do, and brought them downstairs, getting ready to do clean to grab the grab a new pair of clean socks, and then uh, I always immediately clean out the old ones. And uh, I uh, take them out of the bucket, and he's flopping around in one of the socks. He must have jumped into one of the overflows, somehow made it through the tubing into the sock without uh, without taking any damage. And uh, <laughs> I thought, he didn't look too good at the time, but he's made a full recovery and he's doing well. So, isn't it funny too how we always call our fish heat, no matter what they really might be. I'm way too new to salt water, even though I'm two years, or actually about five years into it, to be able to sex fish at this time. But anyway, that's the way it goes. That's another story. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I wish I could find the Melanaris wrasse just to show you the one other fish that I haven't been able to highlight yet in this video. Um, it's kind of fun to sit and just watch these NEMs too, the way they just flow and, and that glare, sorry about that, and the way that the uh, clownfish host or do clownfish host NEMs or do NEMs host clownfish? I think clownfish are the host, or they host the NEM, but tell me, on the, tell me in the comments uh, which is the correct way to say that too. What else? Um, there is a yellow watch, oh, he just came out. Yellow watch for the You can see it's dust.
I have it written down, but if you know offhand the name of this ras, or excuse me, the name of this goby, put it in the comments below, please. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of what's been going on. Um, the one thing that sucks about this goby here is he really does a lot of excavating. As you can see, there's uh, every time I do a water change, and uh, I'll get my python in there, siphon, and uh, kind of move the sand back so that it's more flat and uniform. But uh, it doesn't take long for him to pretty much destroy everything and make all these hills and do his own. I guess with that, if you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment. If you're new to my channel, make sure that you subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you want to see more videos like this. I also do a ton of freshwater stuff. That's probably most of my subscriber base, to be honest with you. And, um, and uh, more of my audience is into the freshwater thing. But I'd really like to get these videos shared and out there in the saltwater community so that one I can just document what I'm doing and show share it with other people but also get help because I'm a 30 year freshwater hobbyist and only a five year saltwater hobbyist so I've still got a lot to learn as you can tell by the things that I told you uh, I've gone through in this tank uh, since the last update alone but anyway uh, thanks for subscribing thanks to everybody that uh, checks these videos out and uh, until next time later